I had a hair transplant. That was the dumbest thing I've ever done. Oh, okay. So here we go. We're getting into it now. So let's see why he thinks it was the dumbest thing he's ever done. Hey guys, Dr. Gary here. Today I'm gonna do a reaction to Joe Rogan's thoughts on hair transplants. So Joe Rogan is a pretty popular dude online and just in general. He was on Fear Factor, he's a UFC commentator, and has a really impressive podcast. I recently came across this article, it's called I Had a Hair Transplant. Joe Rogan talks about the scar in the back of his head. So there are a few videos that are brought up in this article, so let's take a look at them and I'll give you guys my reaction to these videos. <laughs> the Joe Rogan experience. Uh, Look at the little knives in the end. Ugh. It's like so a cat's dick. So he's just scooping it out of there. Is this a woman or a man? I don't know. It's someone who's not that fat. It's a woman. Oh. If whoever the <laughs> this is, if they just got on a carb-free diet for like a couple weeks. So I think he's referring to like liposuction here. As you guys know, I'm, I'm a facial plastics guy and a hair transplant surgeon. I don't do much body work at all. The only thing I'll do is if we have to put hair somewhere on the body or take hair from the body, I'll venture out. Or if I need fat for facial fat transfer, then I'll go into the belly and take some fat out. But I don't do it for actually like sculpting the abs or making someone look skinny or anything like that. It's not even, that this looks is... like a... Not that long of wait to lose. I know a lady who didn't need it and got it done. She, did, she literally didn't need it. I don't know. I don't. So when he says, you know, he knows someone who didn't need plastic surgery and got it done. I mean, that's pretty much most people, you know, who get plastic surgery don't necessarily need it. They want it. So very subjective when he says that he didn't think she needed it. That's his opinion. It's all about what the person who gets the surgery wants and has in mind for their self betterment and improvement and, you know, just feeling more confident about themselves. I don't think it's his place to judge that. But then again, you know, all of us are passing judgment on each other all the time so you know i guess it's joe rogan's right but either way people get plastic surgery because they feel that it's something that would make them just feel better about themselves some feature that they just don't like and they see no other way to improve that situation so that's pretty common for someone not to need something especially in, in the cosmetic surgery realm but nonetheless they want it i don't know her that well but i remember her friend saying how, how much extreme discomfort she was in because she had to wear a Essentially, like this, these tights. Man, so it's like super tight compression pants everywhere to keep all your ass fat together. Yeah, usually my understanding, because again, I don't do body lipo and other kind of body plastic surgery procedures, but generally the compression kind of dressings and that, you know, on the face, we sometimes do that after a facelift or after submental liposuction. It's to kind of keep the swelling down and also to promote lymphatic drainage. That's the way that the swelling basically resolves after a surgery. The edema, the stuff that gathers up, has to go through the lymphatic channels in order to drain out and for all that swelling to go away. So the compression helps promote that type of activity. <laughs> <laughs> it's so intense. I, it's so intense. Like, like when I was having my ass fat loosened. Uh, I, yeah. Well, I, I had a hair transplant. That was the dumbest thing I've ever done. Oh, okay. So here we go. We're getting into it now. So let's see why he thinks it was the dumbest thing he's ever done. Uh, David Feldman, that's what he did. I have this giant scar on the back of my head. It looks like a smile. Great that he's open about it. The way that hair transplants were done for many, many years and the way that they're still sometimes done today is with the FUT or strip method and that's what leaves this kind of linear scar in the back of your head and the shape of it tends to be kind of like what he's saying like sort of a half circle or, or like a smiley face because it's following the safe donor supply on the back of the head. The problem with it is exactly this. He's regretting it now years later because it probably didn't do enough for giving him hair on top of his head and yet it left him with this long scar. Modern techniques are a bit better when it comes to the donor area and the scarring that it leaves. FUE, as you guys probably saw in one of my other videos, it's the one by one removal. So you get these little tiny dot scars and if it's a well-performed FUE, usually even with a shaved head, it's a little hard to tell that anything was done and you can even get scalp micropigmentation into all those dots, which helps. It's harder to cover up a long scar, especially if it's a widened type of scar. It's like a joke piece of meat. My yeah, joke, no, you get like a scar from it. Yeah, my joke was that it's like taking people from uh, a town where everybody's healthy and moving them into a town where everybody's dying. <laughs> <laughs> the only ones that were left were like the new recruits. <laughs> like the, the hair that was supposed to be up there, like oh, it was already falling out. Yeah. So where do you get it from? Like other They parts? take it from the back of your head. They take a strip off oh. the back of your head. Now the way they do it, in a lot of places they do it differently, they do one individual follicle at a time. That's the FUE. That's what he's referring to in that comment. I just was scared that I was going bald, I was like, what can you do? And they tell you they can fix it. They're like, oh great, I'll just get it fixed. 
but it doesn't really fix it. Yeah, like I always tell people, and, and one of my recent Instagram comments and quotes was that plastic surgery is about making things better. It's not about making it perfect or fixing the problem. It's really about just going for some degree of improvement. It would be nice if more places were honest and told patients that you're not gonna get all of a sudden all of your hair back. And he maybe was promised that and kind of went for it and now regrets it. So it would have been better to talk to him about medical therapy, things to improve this his situation, maybe without surgery. And then if surgery became an option to discuss, you know, what would it do for him? How much improvement would he get? Of course, it's not gonna bring all your hair back, especially if you're advanced in your thinning and also kind of how it would look years later. I mean, that's always something that I'm thinking about and I'm gonna make a video specifically on this, but there are a lot of guys who reach out to me, young guys, and they want their hairline lowered. It's a huge no-no in my opinion and I'll go into detail more in a separate video. But yeah, I mean, realistic expectations is like the most important thing and it seems like he wasn't really told what he could expect, what he should expect back when he got the surgery. Well, how come, because that Not fucking, me, uh, what's his name? Joel McHale from yeah. the suit. Because I remember him from those Burger King commercials where he had less hair than I do. Mm. And then all now he's got Dragon Ball Z hair. <laughs> well, I, yeah, it's like real else? thick. It's almost like more thick than they start with sometimes. Did he have a killer transplant, or is that just he's a got good great head of hair, man? He could no, have. he didn't. You remember the Burger King commercial, right? No. I do. I do not. Nobody does. It was when The Office was getting popular, not the the American one. Yeah. So that's what's so interesting about plastic surgery and hair transplants is that some people get these incredible transformations, and then doctors' offices, surgeons like myself, will put those patients up, you know, on our website and you know show off the best results. But then what happens is people come in expecting that they're also going to have a result similar to that person. But everyone has a different experience, and certain surgeries are fairly predictable, and you know you kind of know what you're going get but a lot of times there's still this element of unpredictability with most of what plastic surgeons do and so you don't necessarily know exactly how it's going to work out for you that is why people have different experiences when it comes to hair transplants if you look at someone like elon musk i mean he looks like he has a great head of hair now and clearly he's had several hair transplants so i think part of it is setting again those expectations where you tell someone that hey based on your degree of recession and hair loss if you go down the hair transplant route you might need several procedures over time over many years to get to a place where you want to be but there are also other variables that go into this like for example how much donor supply you have some people have a fairly narrow area that you can pick from to move the grafts. Other people have a very wide and very dense donor supply. The other thing is that some people's hair is quite thin and other people have very thick hair. The thicker hair per strand is going to amount to a better transplant result than someone with really fine hairs. And looking back at some of Joe's old photos, I mean his hair was more thin. So all of those things play a role and so if you go to someone with experience, they're going to explain all this to you and they're going to give you a personalized opinion. And that's another reason why I don't love when people email me photos just like one or two photos of their head and they're like how many graphs how much is it going to cost it's not so simple we have to talk about your goals we have to assess your hair a little bit better and we have to discuss what's possible what's not possible it's never as easy as just looking at a photo and, and giving an opinion the american one and burger king had these commercials that were kind of like the office and he was like the wise i can't picture one if burger people king commercial. have thicker hair I it works, works better every, there he goes that's what we were talking about thicker hair it works better he's absolutely right in that every bald guy's fucking hair every See, celebrity thing is like, something more hair I remember people with uh, thick hair follicles can get away with it like my hair would have looked way better but I have thin hair the, th oh. the hairs themselves are thin so he understands that now but it would have been good if someone explained that to him back when he was signing up for surgery you can have some pretty dramatic result if it's the right kind of thinning what age did you do it 30 no not even oh, not really? even 30 yeah but what so do you, you tell under 30 when you did yeah I think I was 28 I, w well, I just started acting on TV and there are definitely men in their late 20s and early 30s who are good candidates for hair transplants but again it requires a kind of a comprehensive approach a complete discussion about pros and cons of the procedure I just started acting on TV and I was panicking because my hair was yeah. like seriously falling out and I was like this <laughs> is going quick yeah and, and I was like well where's it gonna go and um, <laughs> <laughs> like, you just get thicker pubes. Well, I was like, I was, I knew that part of the reason why I was making money was the way I looked. I, I mean, I, I, I was doing 
stand up and I was acting in these shows. And that's something else that isn't talked about enough. It's not just plastic surgery making you feel better about yourself. It's also how you're perceived by other people. So that's really important, especially if you're on TV, especially if you're in the public eye like he is. It's super important. Most people in most different you know jobs are sort of judged in part based on how they look. And so when you talk about sort of aging issues, which is somewhat related to hair transplants, of course, but also other types of facial changes that occur, you know, especially women are judged based on you know those types of changes so a lot of them feel that as the face starts to sag that it might affect their work especially if they're executive somewhere and you know they've reached a, a certain height of their career and they don't want to be sidetracked by people just not treating them properly because you know they're starting to look old or something like that so that's another impetus for people to get plastic surgery and it's very real and there are studies we'll, we'll put them up next to me here that show this that show that people's perception changes after someone gets plastic plastic surgery and there's data to support it for hair transplant there's data to support it for other types of facial plastics procedures such as rhinoplasty and facelift so it's super real and it's not just you know people doing it for vanity and because you know they should just you know go see a shrink but instead they're doing surgery which is another common misconception that people always you know come out with me with like oh shouldn't your patients just go see some mental health specialist like no that's bs like they're normal people almost all of them don't have any type of psychiatric anything and they just want specific specific things changed or modified or reversed back to the way they were. So I mean, it, it's a lot about other people's perception that leads folks down the road of getting some kind of a plastic surgery procedure. But I wasn't an ugly dude and it, right. it helped. You know, like I was getting certain kind of roles, like boyfriend roles. It's like something those. that a chick has to go through. Yeah, you be panic because you're like, well, this is how I'm making money, and I never made any money before. So all of a sudden, oh, wow, I yeah. went from being completely broke and being a super struggling comic. Like if I got lucky, I was making three hundred a week. Three fifty a week was a big week. Why is that right. bad? You know? Is that bad for a week? <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect if you're a twenty five year old guy, which right. is what I was trying to make it as a comic. Right. Then I went from that to making. Th piles of yeah. TV money. And you're like, how do I not I'm go like, back? I am not getting rid of this. I yeah. gotta figure out a way right. to keep this rolling. But if I should have just shaved my head, I just didn't know. Well, it's not just about not knowing. It's about people's perception of you with a shaved head. Also, you know, I think when he was on television primarily in the in 90s or so, people didn't really walk around bald as often as they do now. This is a subject that's close to my heart. We about to talk about going bald. So it wasn't as accepted. You know, society was just different. The way you know we view bald men, especially in the United States, has I think changed over time. It's become a little bit more accepted now. So it's not just about Joe not knowing that he would have been happy with himself. Also, it's about how other people would have seen him. And I don't think they would have been as receptive as they are now to his bald look. Freedom, I, I, even if I grew like a thick head of hair, I guarantee you I'd still shave my head. I don't want to go to a barber. I had a really nice lady who used to cut my hair too. I loved her. She's fun. She had fun Dude. conversations. But I'd have to go to her f***ing place. And she'd have to come in. No. no. Dude, no like, I wake up every four days. I go, wah, wah. <laughs> Would you remind me of, dude? Um, yeah, I mean, it definitely is a lot less maintenance, and uh, I've discovered that myself because, as you guys know, I've got alopecia areata, so I've got a, a pretty shaved head, too. So, a lot of you guys on my YouTube, you'll be like, Oh, like, who are you to talk? Like, look at your head, you should train yourself first. But as you know, I've got this autoimmune condition, so it's a little bit different. I don't have the option of getting a transplant, which I think I would consider getting a transplant if I were a candidate for it, but I'm not, so. Whatever. It's definitely, I think, like more freeing. I personally don't like the way I look with my head shaved, so I would prefer to have my hair back. And it's kind of growing in, as you guys can see, but you know, it's like very patchy and whatever because of this alopecia areata. But I'm glad that Joe feels that, you know, he's looking good, he's happy with his with his look, and it's definitely a lot lower maintenance, and that's a huge plus. Because you're talking about that, that chilling procedure, but I was on some. Uh... JB Smooth used to have this like dinner show where it'd be like a couple athletes and like a couple comics. Oh yeah, and I and I, just, I don't because I'm a, I don't really follow sports, but these guys were interesting. He's a hockey player and some football player. How <laughs> much of a nerd I am? They're talking about all these treatments they would get, you know, and um, most of them start out as beauty treatments for for rich <laughs> Hollywood women. Really? And then they trickle down to athletes. Wow. No kidding. Is that some like, cryo? That's yeah, where the cryo I, started I, from. I, I swear to God, they were talking about cryo that way, like it was for <laughs> hot chicks, because they're kind of like a hot chick's a kind of athlete, right? Yeah, like, right. You start right. Out, <laughs> and then you go like, oh, she gets no, red shirt. True. Yeah, and then it's you blow true. your arm out. Like Kathleen Turner, like blew her face out from that drug. <laughs> what my girl, drug was she on? 
uh, steroids for arthritis. No way. She didn't want to be. She want people to know about some illness because she thought she'd get less work. So she just was wow. like, took all the jokes about how she looked like a man. She just took all the jokes to work, and then finally wow. came out. We took out. I'm like, hey, good for you, man. If you got work at it, because you know people are terrified of. Well, Let especially find her. Out if they're sick. Yeah, I mean, being going from being an insanely hot woman I to know. being gross—that is a change of everything. That's a change of Builds how you character. Think. Yeah, and again, that's exactly why people look to plastic surgery to give them like another chance at life. It definitely hurts your ego, you know, if you get old and you're starting to show those signs. And so plastic surgery can help reverse that in many situations. It's just a better feeling overall. And also other people kind of treat you differently, which is nice. It's a character builder. It's like a rich was. guy losing all his money. You find out who really yeah. liked you the whole time, you know? Yeah. But yeah. It changes how you interface with the world. Like a beautiful woman interfaces <clears throat> with the world like the most popular celebrity possible yeah like a beautiful woman is like tom cruise everywhere she goes <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to look at the second video for joe rogan talking about being bald he's telling the world he can't remember things i wonder like they're really close to curing that you know Really? Yeah. They're injecting people's brains with stem cells. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, we're definitely not that close to curing hair loss, unfortunately. Every time it seems like it's five years away, but no one's really that close to it. There is a human clinical trial starting out hopefully in the next year or so out of Japan, but we'll see if that actually gets underway. So we've only kind of grown some hair in mice, so we're still not that close. And no one's injecting the brain with stem cells for hair loss. We have PRP where the platelets are being injected into the actual scalp but but not not into the brain and there are people doing some like fat stem cell injections into the scalp but that's a little bit more experimental at this point and fixing all kinds of weird <laughs> that's going wrong how is that stem cell i've been thinking about it. you asked me about it i've been thinking about it it's crazy so you heal like wolverine it's very strange so okay will it how far away? It's not gonna grow your dick, sorry. Not my dick, my hair. What about hair? No. <laughs> Why not? Why can't it stem us still out? They'll, they'll, they'll probably have something for that soon. I don't know, man. I'll, I'll never stem go back to cream? hair again. Pop I like, it back up. I like having a shaved head. It's so yeah. easy. So I got a good head for it. I look better with a shaved head than I did it's with, round. especially with the hair that I had left. It's just all sad <laughs> hair, sad, sad <laughs> hair, coughing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, hair, I mean, over time goes through a series of miniaturization steps and that's how it starts to get really thin and falls out eventually. And so that's part of the process of aging hair. And it's usually the result of dihydrotestosterone and that causes that miniaturization process to occur. <laughs> Dying people, it's like having a cancer your patient living on your head. That's why Jeff Ross changes that too. Yeah, it's over. It's over. That's why I cut mine shorter. But I like it, man. I like yeah. having it short. Yeah, it's it's bull. It's like it was a waste of my energy. And you got a round enough it. head. Yeah. If you have a flat back, that's the ba the worst kind of head. <laughs> it's like a laptop head. <laughs> Somebody hit you with a shovel head. <laughs> the back of your head, <laughs> the back of your head just looks like a laptop. <laughs> it's just flat like a book. There's a lot of dudes that have whack domes. I yeah. feel for them. But uh, you know what, man? This doesn't look good with hair either. You know, that, that weird heads. Hurt. Weird heads are weird heads. What you need to do is get a, one of them, like a head, like a fake butt. Just put it in your head. Implants. <laughs> the girls are like touching. I'm like, why is it all soft in the back? <laughs> That's probably totally a good idea. Probably. Most people aren't touching your head. Well, you could always say, yeah, it was in a motorcycle accident. Oh my God, that scar. <laughs> I love scars. You turn me on. <laughs> Meanwhile, you just had a, a butt. Put in the back of your head like a fake or it's, plate. But it's like a, it, but it feels like like a rotting apple. Just well, you know, the consistency of it. We are laughing at this, right? Yeah. But they do that to chins. Put double chins in. They put a fake chin in people. I don't know what they're talking about with the butt and the implants in the back of the head. They're just joking around. But now he's starting to talk about chin implants. And yeah, I mean, people get chin implants. People have recessed chins, and a chin implant can really improve the facial harmony quite a bit. A chin implant can help if you're doing some sort of neck work, if you're doing a neck lift. Having something that extends out instead of really recessed allows that angle to be recreated. And also, some people get chin implants when their nose appears to be like sticking out and be overly projected from their face. So a chin implant can again balance those features out. It's super common. What do you mean? They put a fake chin on people. Who does that? 
plastic surgeons. The material is usually silicone. There are other materials that chin implants are made of, like uh, Medpore, but those are the most common ones. And yeah, I mean, it's like a synthetic material that goes into that area. I think they go in through the the, like the lip area where the teeth are. So there are two approaches that you can take for the chin implant. It can go on the inside of the lip or more commonly we actually go underneath the chin area. So this is less likely to give you an infection than putting an implant through the mouth. So usually they're done through here actually. And they shove like an implant in your chin because some people have like very small chins like the yeah. chin is tucked up in their neck and they, they feel like it's unattractive. I know and chinless so people. It's weird. Brian Keith Effich. He's chinless. Does it bother him? No, he makes jokes about it. That's good. Yeah. Interesting conversation that Joe had about plastic surgery, about hair restoration, hair transplants. You know, a lot of this comes down to just personal choice and also the cards that you're dealt, right? If you have thin hair, if you have almost nothing left at the top or the front of your head, and you have a really bad donor supply where the hair is very sparse, then your odds of getting a great result with a hair transplant are just very low. So you just want to be able to go to a clinic for hair or for or for plastic surgery where they'll explain all these things to you and just be honest about what options there are for you, what would make sense and what wouldn't make sense. Sometimes, you know, I'd spend more time telling people that they're not good candidates for surgery than, than trying to tell them what a great result they would get. Actually, most of the time I'm doing that. And some people don't understand, like they reach out, they're like, oh, I'm ready to get surgery, like sign me up. And I tell them like, no, no, wait, these are the reasons why I don't think that this would be a good choice for you. And a lot of times they don't listen, you know, and they won't get the surgery with me, then they'll go to the next person who will operate on them. It's complicated. I think Joe has a healthy sort of perspective on it, at least how it pertains to him. But, you know, he's got to also realize that there are a lot of other people with many different opinions and, you know, people make these decisions based on what is important for them. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that and uh, let me know what you think. Make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks.